Now during all the years that Saul was king, the Israelites were in a continuous war against the Philistines, who were a neighboring tribe that worshipped many gods. It was the custom in those days to sometimes decide a battle by each side choosing one champion to fight the champion of their enemy. But there arose out of the ranks of the Philistines a champion from Gath named Goliath. Goliath was truly a giant of a man, for he stood nearly nine feet tall. And when the Israelites saw him, they trembled. He was unlike anything anyone had ever imagined. On his head, he wore a brass helmet. Then on his huge body, a coat of mail that weighed nearly 200 pounds. His legs were covered with brass greaves and he carried a giant spear tipped with an iron spearhead that weighed 25 pounds. He boldly challenged the Israelites to send a man to fight with him, taunting them and boasting and strutting on the battlefield. Why are you standing there? He shouted mockingly. Can it be that there is no man among the Israelites willing to come against me in battle? There were many brave warriors among Saul's army, but none so brave that he dared come against this Philistine monster. They trembled at his sight and murmured amongst themselves, Who is like unto this Goliath, they said, and who is able to make war with him? Goliath struck fear even in the heart of Saul, who was a huge man and a brave warrior himself. Saul wrung his hands in fear, for it appeared that unless something were done, the Philistines would at last have total victory over the Israelites. For 40 days, the Philistine giant challenged them, daring the Israelites to fight. And for 40 days, the Israelites shook with fear, unable to find a single challenger from among their ranks. Now it so happened that David had been traveling back and forth between Shiloh and Bethlehem to continue to take care of his father's sheep. Jesse was anxious to discover the fate of his three sons who were in Saul's army, and so he gave David some food and sent him to Shiloh to find out how his brothers were faring. When David arrived, the Philistine, Goliath from Gath, was again strutting on the plain of battle, daring the Israelites to send a man to do battle with him. But when David saw the Israelites trembling at the sight of Goliath, he grew angry. Who is this Philistine that dares defy the armies of the living God? he asked. When Abinadab saw that his youngest brother was stirring up trouble, he became displeased. What are you doing here? he said. You have no business among soldiers. Who is taking care of your sheep in Bethlehem? But David persisted. This is not right, he said. Who is that Philistine that he dare defy the armies of the Lord God? God will not allow it. He will give that overgrown heathen into our hands. The soldiers were taken aback at David's courage, but he became increasingly frustrated at their fearfulness. God is faithful to his people, he said. Surely he will deliver this puffed-up blasphemer into our hands. But none of the soldiers was quite as convinced of this as David was. One of them, hearing David's words, reported them to King Saul, who sent for David. I know you are a servant of the Lord, Saul said, and that you are brave and zealous for God and have great faith. But this Goliath is unlike anything anyone has ever seen. David was undaunted, though. When Moses stood up against Pharaoh, the Lord was with him, he said. And when Joshua stormed Jericho, it was not by his might, but by the Lord's. Therefore, if no one else will go, I, David, your servant, will go and fight this Philistine. But you are still a youth, David, Saul said, and this Philistine is an experienced soldier. You don't stand a chance against him. Then David told the king a story. When I have been out in the wilderness keeping my father's sheep, lions have come, and bears, and stolen away my lambs. 
But each time I have left my father's flocks to go after the one that was lost, and each time with nothing more than my shepherd's club and staff, I have fought and regained what was stolen. Even when the great beasts have turned to come against me, I have killed them. But it is not me who does it, but the Lord. And the same Lord who delivered me and my sheep from the paws of the lions and bears in the wilderness will deliver me out of the hands of this Philistine. Then go, said Saul, and the Lord be with you. But before he went, Saul gave David his armor, putting on his head a helmet of brass and arming him with a coat of mail. He gave him also a sword. Now you are outfitted as Goliath is, Saul said. But David had never worn soldier's armor before. I cannot go with these things, he said. I'm not used to them. With that, he took them off and left Saul's chamber wearing only his shepherd's clothing. Then David stopped by a brook and selected five smooth stones, which he put into his shepherd's bag. And as he made his way toward the battlefield, he sang out in joy. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Word that David would challenge Goliath had very quickly traveled throughout the entire Israelite army. And when David finally strode through the ranks toward the battlefield, every eye was upon him. The soldiers marveled at him, wondering what sort of person he was, for he looked nothing like a warrior, and he carried neither sword nor spear nor shield, and he wore no helmet nor any armor at all. David heard them talking, and he could hear Goliath roaring his threats and taunts. Does not a single Israelite have any courage? Where is your God that you cower so? But David's heart was not anxious, and as he approached the battlefield, he sang as sweetly as though he were under a tree with his lyre watching his father's flock. When at last he strode onto the field of battle to confront Goliath, the Philistine soldiers saw him and laughed. But Goliath did not laugh. He could not believe what his eyes saw. He stared in amazement at this curious youth who wore no armor and carried only a shepherd's staff. Perhaps you think I am a dog that you should come to fight me with a stick, he roared. In the name of my gods, I curse you and your people, and I curse the name of the god you serve. Step forward now that I might give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Hearing these words, David did not move forward or backward. He only stood where he was. You come to me with a sword and a shield and a spear, he shouted in reply. But I come to you in the name of the Holy One of Israel, the most high God of heaven and earth, whom you have cursed. And it is he, not I, who will deliver you into my hands this day, so that everyone will know that there is a God in Israel. Goliath burned on hearing these words, but David continued, The Lord does not need a sword as you do, or a spear as you do, or a shield as you do, because the battle belongs to him and him alone. Goliath could hear no more of this. He came across the field toward David, and the air was rent with the clanking sound of his heavy armor. But David was not frightened. And the moment that he saw the huge Philistine approaching him, he started running toward him as fast as he could. Goliath was stunned to see this, for he could not comprehend the young Israelite's boldness. Before Goliath knew what was happening, David plucked one of the stones out of his bag, put it in the pocket of his sling, and with an incredible power that was not his own, he whirled it over his head. Then he let it go, and with a surging crack of a lightning bolt, it struck Goliath's forehead, a dead bullseye. There was an instant 
and perfect silence as 10,000 men held their breath. Every Philistine and every Israelite saw that the smooth stone had hit its mark. No one moved. Then, as though time stood still, the giant's legs buckled and he fell and fell and fell, crashing at long last into the dusty plain in an endless and vain jangling of useless armor that washed out over the stunned ranks in ever-widening waves on and on and on until it had spent itself and was again eclipsed by the powerful silence of the valley. Thus, David, defeated the giant Philistine, Goliath from Gath. David continued to serve the Lord with all his heart. And in God's time, just as it had been ordained so many years before on the day that Samuel anointed him, David became a great king over the nation of Israel. He brought them great victories and reigned over them for many years. And in all his ways, great and small, he acknowledged the Lord his God, the Holy One of Israel. 